So in this video, we will try to understand velocity and acceleration analysis of single slider crank mechanism using analytical method. Now, as shown over here, we are having the position of the crank coinciding with inner dead center. And as the crank starts moving from the inner dead center position, then as you can see over here, as the crank starts rotating from this particular point and it has covered the angle theta and it reaches to this particular position, this is the angle theta from the IDC position, then the piston has moved from this position to this position. So this is the displacement of the piston. So we have to find out what will be the displacement of the piston when the crank has turned an angle of theta from the IDC position. Once you get this particular value, then you can easily differentiate that displacement with respect to time and you'll get the value of velocity. Similarly, if you differentiate velocity with respect to time, you'll get the acceleration value. Now, as you can see over here, so in this right angle triangle O, Q and C, this O, Q will be nothing but the adjacent component, so it is R cos theta. Similarly, in this right angle triangle P, Q and C, this Q, P is the adjacent component, so hypotenuse is L and this angle of obliquity is phi, so this particular Q and P, that distance is nothing but it is L cos phi. Similarly, when the crank is coinciding with inner dead center position, we are having this O C dash as the position of the crank and that is nothing but the radius R of the crank. Similarly, this C dash and this P dash will be nothing but what? It is the connecting rod. So L is the connecting rod. So this L plus R, so that will be this particular total distance. So this is, this total distance is L plus R. So from this up to this, this is L plus R. If you subtract this L cos phi and R cos theta from them, then you'll get the displacement X of the piston. So we can say that X is equal to L plus R minus into bracket L cos phi plus R cos theta. Now we have to establish the relation between this angles theta and phi. Now angle theta is known as the crank angle and angle phi is known as angle of obliquity. That is nothing but the inclination of the connecting rod with the line of stroke or with the horizontal. So let us try to establish the relation between this phi. Suppose we consider this right angle triangle O q and c then sin theta is equal to opposite side that is qc divided by this hypotenuse that is r so that we have written over here so therefore qc is equal to r sin theta similarly if we consider the right angle triangle that is this p q and c then also this angle of obliquity is phi so sin phi will be equal to opposite side that is qc divided by the hypotenuse that is l so therefore we can say that this qc is equal to l sin phi now as both these equations they are representing the same thing that is qc we can equate the right hand side of these two equations so therefore we can say that l sin phi has to be equal to r sin theta Now transfer this L on the other side. So it is R sin theta divided by L. And this term we can return as sin, we can write it as sin theta divided by L by R. And this L upon R, that is the ratio of length of connecting rod to the crank length, that ratio is known as angle of obliquity. So in this way, we can establish the relation between the input angle that is theta or crank angle that is theta and angle of obliquity that is phi.
now let us start with our first analysis that is displacement analysis and we have seen that x is given by l plus r minus l cos phi plus r cos theta so let us start with this particular part so as we have already seen x is given by l plus r minus inside the bracket it is l cos phi plus r cos theta so this we have already seen now just simplify this so this can be written as l minus l cos phi plus r minus r cos theta now we can take l common from this term and r common from these two terms so if you take l common it will be 1 minus cos phi and if you take r common it will be 1 minus cos theta now from these two terms we will take r common so r is taken throughout common so it is l upon r into bracket 1 minus cos phi and as we have taken r common here it will be only 1 minus cos theta now we know that we will use our basic trigonometry that is sin square plus cos square is equal to 1 so sin square phi plus cos square phi that is equal to 1 and from this we will find out the value of cos square phi that is nothing but 1 minus sin square so cos square phi is equal to 1 minus sin square phi and therefore cos phi will be square root of this particular term or we can say that it is 1 minus sin square phi raised to 1 by 2 now apply the binomial theorem over here and neglect the higher term so we can say that this will be cos phi just we will take this 1 by 2 over here in front of this sin square phi and then we will neglect the other terms so it is 1 minus 1 by 2 sin square phi so over here in place of this cos phi we can substitute this entire value now we know that sin phi is sin theta upon n so let us modify this equation further and then we will substitute those well that particular value so it is 1 upon 2 so it is sin square phi so we can write down this as sin square theta divided by n square by substituting sin phi as sin theta upon n over here now we can substitute this value of cos phi that is this entire value over here so that we have substituted so you can see over here in place of this cos phi it is 1 minus 1 by 2 sin square theta upon n square and the other part as it is that is 1 minus cos theta term as it is now we know that l upon r is the obliquity ratio now open this bracket so it is 1 minus 1 and minus minus will become plus 1 upon 2 sin square theta upon n square this term will remain as it is now we will cancel out this plus 1 and minus 1 so that we are left with x is equal to
so write down the same terms and now we'll cal cancel out one this this is n square and n so we can cancel out one n also from this so ultimately what we are getting over here is x is equal to r into bracket sine square theta divided by 2n and this 1 minus cos theta as it is. So this is our first equation correct, where we have obtained the expression of the displacement of the piston in terms of crank angle theta. Now we have to find out the velocity of the piston and we know that velocity is nothing but a rate of change of displacement so that is dx by dt which can also be written as dx by d theta into d theta upon dt. Now d theta upon dt is nothing but rate of change of angular displacement and that is nothing but the angular velocity of the crank because theta is the crank angle. Suppose we call this as equation 1. So our first aim is now to find out the value of dx by d theta, dx by d theta. So now we'll differentiate x with respect to theta. So this 1 upon 2n is a constant. So it is derivative of sine square theta. plus derivative of this particular that that is 1 minus cos theta now we know that derivative of sine square theta is nothing but 2 sine theta cos theta derivative of 1 will be 0 and derivative of cos theta is minus sin theta. So that we have written over here. So this 2 sin theta cos theta is nothing but sin 2 theta. So 1 upon it is sin 2 theta upon 2n and this minus minus will become plus. So it is plus sin theta. So this is the expression for dx upon d theta. Now this we can substitute in our equation 1. So equation 1 is given by dx by d theta into omega. So in place of this dx by d theta we can substitute this value this term we can this entire term we can substitute over here so value of dx by d theta is r into bracket sine 2 theta upon 2n plus sine theta so this is the equation which will give us the velocity of piston so just rearrange the term so it is r omega into bracket sine 2 theta upon 2n plus sine theta so this is the expression for velocity of piston let us call this as equation 2 now if we differentiate this velocity with respect to time then we'll get the acceleration of the piston so our next task is to find out the acceleration of the piston so suppose fp is the acceleration of the piston so that will be equal to derivative of velocity of piston with respect to time and this can also be written as dvp by d theta into d theta by dt and we know that d theta by dt is nothing but omega so we can say that this is nothing but dvp by d theta as it is and d theta by dt is omega so now we have to find out 
the derivative of this velocity of piston with respect to theta so we will consider this equation number 2 for that and we will differentiate this equation with respect to theta so differentiate vp with respect to theta so dvp by d theta so we have to differentiate this equation r omega is constant so we have to find out derivative of this term which is present in the bracket so this is equal to r omega as it is now take this derivative sign inside 1 upon 2n is a constant so keep it as it is so we will have derivative of sine 2 theta plus derivative of sine theta so this will be equal to r omega as it is this 1 upon 2n also as it is and we know that derivative of sine 2 theta will be cos 2 theta into 2 now cancel out these two and derivative of sine theta is derivative of sine theta is cos theta so we can cancel out these two from the numerator as well as from the denominator so we are left with dvp by d theta is equal to r omega as it is then this is cos 2 theta upon n plus cos theta now we can substitute this value in equation 2 so from equation 2 we are having acceleration of piston fp is given by dvp by d theta into omega so substitute the value of dvp by d theta that is cos 2 theta r omega cos 2 theta upon n plus cos theta and multiply it by omega so omega into omega so that will be r omega square if p will be equal to r omega square into bracket cos 2 theta upon n plus cos theta so this is the expression for displacement velocity and acceleration of the piston so let us call this as equation 3 so using these equations we can find out the values of 